Why do people sell low hour tractors? It's a question often asked with a bit of skepticism behind it. And it's a fair question too. So I made a video recently about high hour tractors. You know, what constitutes high hours? And it's a very subjective topic. You're gonna have a wide array, a wide range of answers there. So after you're done watching this video, make sure you check that one out. You know, so zero hours, that's the, the ultimate cutoff for low hours, right? So we have that firm determination or that starting point there and anything above that, well, somewhere along those lines, it goes from being a low hour tractor to a high hour tractor. Where that point is, I have no idea. It's all subjective as well, but I can tell you there's gonna be a far smaller range of what's considered to be a low hour tractor versus what's considered to be a high hour tractor. Certainly the closer you are to zero, the lower hours it is, right? <laughs> Being a tractor dealer like I am, I have the opportunity to buy a lot of equipment all the time. And I've heard of many different reasons over the years. And then there's a handful, you know, less than 10 or so that are very common and you hear over and over and over. A long time ago, I used to be one of those skeptics wondering, why are these people trading in such low hour equipment? What's going on there? What's the story behind that? Over time, I became less concerned about that as I heard those same reasons repeated over and over and got the equipment in and looked it over and it ran great and it still worked just like it should. It looks great, everything else. So I don't think that there's really a, a hidden, you know, negative reason typically behind a low hour tractor. There's a lot of very legitimate reasons that folks are selling their tractors. So I really wouldn't worry about buying somebody else's problems. Hey, so I know this is not an exhaustive list, so I'd love to hear the other reasons for low hour tractors. So if you've got a different reason, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear about it. I'm going to tell you the most common reason, the most popular reason for trading in or selling a tractor a little bit later on. So make sure you stick around. Hey, and if you haven't done so yet, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button below. It's completely free. Just hit subscribe. You'll get the notifications of the new videos. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs down. Make sure you read that description, okay? Links to my Amazon store, links to my website. A lot of good products, accessories for your tractor, for your homestead. Can help you with a tractor, can help you with an attachment, can help with delivery and financing too. So here you go in no particular order. So the first reason that somebody might be selling their tractor is because of a life change, okay? So take this tractor right here behind me. That's my 4066R. I don't want to sell it, <laughs> but I've got it for sale right now. You know, we are actually moving from our our current house, uh, planning to move to a, a new house with some acres, that kind of thing. Yeah, this tractor would be perfect for that, but you know, I'm, I'm trying to sell it to free up some cash, just make that move, that transition easier. And you know, part of me is regretting that decision. And maybe if somebody doesn't act too fast, um, well, that opportunity might be gone. I might just pull it off the market, but that's a very legitimate reason right there. You know, you're just looking to free up that cash that you have tied up. And that may not really apply to somebody who has their equipment financed, but if you've got, you know, 40 some grand that's tied up in a machine and they're looking to use that for something else, that's a pretty legitimate reason. A funny reason that people are gonna get rid of their tractor are because they didn't like it, okay? And so they jump ship, they go from Kubota to John Deere, or they go from John Deere to Kubota. It's a pretty funny thing to think about really, you know, but uh, sometimes you just don't know until you buy the tractor, right? And so maybe there's just some, thing about it you know maybe the hydrostatic response or the pedal configuration or the lift capacity or whatever it might be you know maybe it's the dealer that you have near you that you just refuse to ever buy another piece of equipment from them so you go to the the, com the competition that's just down the road you know a lot of reasons again but uh, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the equipment you know maybe it's just personal preference right and so that's a very common reason a lot more popular than you might think uh, for trading in or selling a tractor you know, so you could also experience something like a financial hardship. You know, if you lost a job or, you know, your spouse lost a job or maybe there's a big medical expense that came up or, you know, huge repair bills that came up. Something along those lines, uh, some dramatic financial change in your life that requires you to just sell the tractor, you know, and maybe you had absolutely no intentions of it and uh, it's just something that came out of the blue. And honestly, that's one of the big reasons that I kind of steer folks towards those used tractors are because, you know, when these guys buy tractors that are brand new and they're only one year old or less than a year old or a year and a half old and they have to sell them, well, guess what? If they finance that whole amount new, they're going to be underwater and they're still going to have to cough up more cash typically to try to uh, break even on that loan and get it fully paid off. And so financial hardship is a real thing. Nobody expects it to happen. I mean, look at the, the COVID pandemic that's going on right now. Six weeks ago, the economy was sky high. Everybody was just living great you know i mean living the high life 
then out of the blue, this thing came along and just devastated the economy, devastated the world, you know? And so it's just things like that. And that's a pretty extreme example, but you just never know. And so I feel uh, very strongly about buying used equipment if you can, because you're gonna have avoided that initial depreciation hit and it's gonna be a lot easier, you know, six months or a year or a year and a half down the road to easily break even on that tractor if you need to sell it, you know, because of a financial and unexpected circumstance that comes up. I know you guys are eyeing this mirror right here because I get questions about it in every single video that I post. And I've told you guys before where I get them. I put them on uh, this tractor here, put them on my cab tractor. You know, they're a great thing. You can put them on a lot of different tractors without having to drill, a lot of John Deere tractors, okay? And so you can see right here, this nut, this bolt and nut right here uh, are, are provisioned right in a hole that's already there on the loader arm, okay? So no need to drill through that. That's gonna be found on a lot of models on John Deere, okay? There might be some other manufacturers out there as well, but it's very prevalent on the John Deere tractors. And so let's take a look at your loader. If you've got a little hole up in the top here, gonna to be one on the other side as well, then you've got the setup already to add these mirrors on. Where you can find these mirrors are gonna be on Amazon. And I've got links in the description below of this video, okay? And the links in the description below down there, a link to the Amazon store that I have as well, where you can click on there, purchase them, and that kind of thing too. So. These are seven by 12s. Um, they came with everything that you see right here. Now I've had one person tell me they didn't get this bracket included. I don't know if that was a one-off type of thing or if they didn't see it in the box or what the case was, but every set that I've purchased has come with the hardware here, uh, the bracket and the mirrors. And you can purchase it as a set of one. You can purchase a set of two, so you have one on either side, but really nice addition. They're super cheap, something that everybody wants to have. And I'm asked about it all the time. You know, so this is now one of the more uncommon reasons, but I want to share it because it's actually one of the tractors that I have here in stock right now. You might be able to see a Kubota that's over there. It's an L2501 and the customer owned it for several years. However, he recently was using the front end loader and ended up uh, picking up a really heavy load. And then the back wheels came right off the ground, tipped it forward, was resting on the bucket. He wasn't hurt. Tractor wasn't hurt, nothing like that. But he had no liquid ballast, had no wheel weights, had no three-point ballast of any kind. <laughs> and essentially, it just scared him to the point where he no longer wanted to have a tractor. And, you know, I recently did a video about the importance of ballast weight and having that counterweight when you're using a front-end loader. So that's extremely important to do, okay? So this customer actually just sold it right back to the dealership and then they were selling it off because he wanted nothing else to do with it. You know, I, I don't know why he just wouldn't have added the liquid ballast, put the ballast box on, done whatever he had to to get that required minimum ballast weight. So I encourage you to check out that video as well, but that's a little bit of an unusual reason there. However, it was very legitimate. So I actually have two tractors in stock right now for this reason, and it's gonna be either injury or death. So the gentleman that owned this Kubota tractor right here just ended up passing away. You know, and I also have my John Deere 1025R. The gentleman that owned that one, he only had it for a year or so ended up getting a, a very serious injury. I, I think it was a, a stroke or some sort of majorly debilitating injury where he could no longer use his tractor. You know, so if you're put in that kind of situation, obviously the tractor is gonna be getting sold. And so whether it's the family selling it off or uh, maybe they're working with the dealer that they bought it from to try to help them sell it and get out from underneath it, those kinds of reasons come up and there's really nothing you can do about it. But given the huge population that we have here in the US, I mean, this kind of thing happens way more than you think it would. It's really unfortunate, but it's just one of the things that happen. A very common reason is folks want a change in their configuration, okay? And so sometimes that could be wanting to get one that has something like a backhoe on it right here, or perhaps it could be they're all done with that backhoe, they don't need it anymore, so they wanna get out of that and get to something different. Because a backhoe is a very expensive attachment to just have sitting there that doesn't get used any longer after you're done with a couple of projects. <laughs> yeah, that might've made the overrated list that I did recently as well. So you know, a lot of these tractors, you know, a homeowner is gonna buy one. Uh, with the idea in mind that maybe they just moved into a new place or they have several big projects coming up that it makes a lot more sense to to buy a tractor with a backhoe versus renting one for that kind of thing uh, where they're going to have to use it maybe off and on over the course of a few months or the course of a summer or a year or whatever it might be you know now if you only have one or two little projects just go rent a mini excavator for a weekend knock it out and you're, you're going to be well ahead however for some of those folks that might have to rent one four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times, it makes a lot more sense to get something with the backhoe on it versus renting something over and over and over and over. It's gonna be very inefficient and probably cost about the same amount at that point.
So what do they do when they're all done with it then? Well, they go ahead and sell it. And I've had that happen many times on, on the buying with a backhoe and then uh, the trading back in for something without a backhoe. Both ways there, okay? So very common reason, very legitimate reason. Doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the equipment. Man, I tell you, a factory cab is where it's at. And that is a very popular reason that folks switch tractors. Get rid of their open station, get into a cab, you know? And so I tell you, if you've been blowing snow or plowing that kind of thing for years on end and you're just fed up with it, not one more winter is gonna go by without a cab and heat, well, I can understand the reason to trade in. And, and something like this, a factory cab is gonna have air conditioning as well, okay? So if you're doing a lot of work in the summertime with its, uh, if it's tilling and brush hogging and whatever else and you get allergies, all that kind of thing, a factory cab like this with that air conditioning in there is really amazing. You know, it makes a big difference in just uh, how you spend your time on a tractor. And there's no doubt about it, you pay a pretty penny for these factory cabs. And it's just, uh, that's the brakes of the game. There's no way around that. John Deere, Kubota, doesn't really matter. But that's one of the big reasons that you see uh, a lot of these tractors getting traded in, though. Our, our folks just finally decided to bite the bullet and spend something, get a factory cab. So another very popular reason is simply just wanting to upgrade to the latest and the greatest, okay? And an example of that is gonna be the two series in John Deere. You've got the classic style of two series, you've got the remodeled, the redesigned style of two series, okay? And so they really made a lot of drastic improvements, well, along with drastically increasing the price point, but you know, some guys just want that, you know? And I'm in the same boat. A lot of times that's what I wanna do. I want the latest and greatest, you know, all the new uh, bells and whistles and the features and capabilities and all that kind of thing. So, you know, that could be a very legitimate reason for somebody to trade something in. Go from more of a, an older style just to get the latest and greatest, all the new stuff, all the bells and whistles, that kind of thing. Very common, doesn't mean there's anything wrong with their old tractor. Hey, I see you eyeing these grapples here. You got the electric grapple, you got the brush crusher. I've done some videos on both of these comparing them, but I'm telling you what, these are grapples for the rest of us. For the 90% of us that don't have that third function on our tractor to operate a grapple. You finally have some choices here. An electric grapple right here, I sell them for John Deere, I sell them for Skid Steer, okay? So the Kubotas, Mahindras, Masseys, Coyotes, all of those. This black one right here will work for you. Otherwise, you get it in green for John Deere Quick Attach. Same thing over here with the brush crusher. Got several different models here to work on the John Deere's and then everything else as well. So check it out. You're going to have links below that goes right to my website. You can get more information on there than you can get a hold of me. I can take your order. Also, a link above right there. Make sure you check out the comparison. A lot of detail about the electric grapple and the brush crusher there. So another reason that folks might be selling their tractor is because they're downsizing. You know, a lot of folks, they get to that age or maybe they move across country and they go from the farm to a place in town, you know, where they're, they're, they're just ready to be done on the farm. And they're, they're going to town just like my grandparents did, you know. You just go and you sell everything off. And again, common reason, you know, a lot of times the folks that have tractors are gonna be the older generation, right? You know, you got more time on your hands or you have more land, that kind of thing that you've accumulated over the years and been working and everything else. And, you know, just get to that point in life when it's just time to sell it all off and, and, and get to something easier, just a little bit easier piece of property to manage and you just gotta get rid of the equipment. So a lot more popular reason than you might think, you know, Again, it's just uh, part of the way of life, right? You know, we're all going to be there someday, and man, I hope I'm a long time before that has to happen, but I can appreciate the folks that have to, that have to do that because that's a very tough decision to make, and uh, it's something that we all have to deal with at some point. Okay, so now for the most popular reason, and I'd say this is probably far and away the most popular reason that uh, tractors are sold or traded in, and that's going to be it's too big or it's too small. You know, it's very seldom the right size, right? You know, and even when I'm trying to think and pick that perfect tractor for myself to keep for a while, there's always a trade-off, no matter what it is, whether it's load capacity or turning radius or the feature that's on it, there's always gonna be something about it that is just not absolutely perfect, you know? And I get there's gonna be some of you folks that, that have the perfect tractor, and I hope all of you have the perfect tractor, you know, but um, in a perfect world, you know, you'd, you'd pick this option and that option, this feature and that tire and this and that and the other thing and build your perfect machine, you know, the right size for you. But that's just not capable, to, you know, not possible for us to do. And so you got to make some sacrifices, some trade-offs. And sometimes that can be a learning curve where you do have to go through one, two, three tractors. I try to be very, very 
I don't know, almost annoying with my customers because I wanna make sure that they're getting that right tractor the first time for them. And it just doesn't always work out. It almost always does. I would say that most of my customers are pretty darn happy. A little bit of it though is just trial and error. You know, you don't realize maybe the tasks that you're gonna have uh, when you first have the tractor or you think of new tasks that you wanna do with the tractor as, after you realize what these things can do, you know? And so maybe that causes you to wanna get a bigger tractor or uh, perhaps you, you move or perhaps you uh, just take on some additional side jobs, something that causes you to want to maybe have a more maneuverable tractor, a smaller one on a smaller footprint, easier to tow, whatever the case might be. There's a lot of reasons for going up, going down, and tractor size, and it's one of the most common reasons for sure. It sure doesn't mean that there's something wrong with the tractor though, so very legitimate. Okay, let's talk about calves again, all right? And so this gets back to that high hour video and actually a comment that came from that video, and I wanted to include it because it's a very, very legitimate reason, and so thanks to the several of you that posted that in that video too. A great reason for a tractor to have low hours is because that person bought it with one purpose in mind. So something like a heated cab like this, it's an aftermarket cab for instance, no air conditioning, it's got the heat. It's intended to be used in the winter time, keep you warm when you're taking care of snow or working outdoors in the cold weather. And a lot of those folks and a lot of folks in general are buying tractors simply to use in the wintertime, you know, just to clear your drive, maybe clear your drive and the neighbors, clear your drive and your private road that you're on, that kind of thing, just something for that specific purpose. And it doesn't have to be, you know, a cab in wintertime. It could be one purpose in the summertime or the spring or the fall or whatever it might be. You know, some folks just buy a tractor because they want it and they're gonna use it for that one thing and that's it. Pretty legitimate to me. Another reason is, and you know, typically one of my favorite reasons to get a tractor is because they just didn't use it, you know, and so maybe they bought it and, um, you know, and I, and I, I get it. I mean, I, I, I'm not super happy that they spent all this money and then didn't use it, but I just like to get them because I love low hour inventory. So it's, if it hasn't been used, there's very little opportunity for it to have any kind of wear on it, you know, so, but a lot of these folks, they just buy one, they think they're going to use it. Maybe they just always wanted a John Deere or always wanted a tractor, you know, so they finally get it and they just don't really have a great need for it, they find out, you know. So it just sits there collecting dust in their garage and sooner or later they get around to deciding just to get rid of it or maybe trading it in and just getting a different kind of toy to try out, you know. And so um, very legitimate reason, happens all the time. Again, we're talking about a huge nation full of tractor owners here, okay. So all these reasons, you know, you think about all the thousands of people that have tractors out there that are buying them all the time, you know, it's just simply going to happen to some of the folks. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you found that informative, gave you a little bit more insight on why there may be low hours on a tractor that you're looking to buy. Not everything is a lemon out there. There's a lot of legitimate reasons for selling those low hour tractors and this gives you a good insight into what a lot of those reasons are. Again, hit that subscribe button below if you would. Make sure you check out the other videos on my YouTube channel. We'd love to have you follow along. Have a great day. As always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'm Mr. Luxury. Pip pip to doodly do.